Chief Cato. So, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you. Uh, as we go through the report, I'd just like to uh, remind you as we look through this that our overarching philosophy and strategy in the police department is to develop accurate, timely intelligence on people, places, and behaviors. And so as we go through here, we'll, I'm going to highlight some of the uh, opportunities the officers did just that, uh, uh, targeted certain places, certain people, and certain behaviors. First of all, uh, a BMV, BMV, burglary of a motor vehicle. BMV is short for burglary of a motor vehicle. That's the number one most often reported crime in the city. One out of every five crimes, 20% of all reported crime is a BMV. These officers, are, we're going to talk about one and two beat first. Those are the, all the, everything north of I-30 in the northern half of the city. So on one beat, Officer Wilhelms, the officer there on the left, he was responding to a call of a burglary in progress, a BMV in progress at the Evergreen at Mesquite. And he located a suspect vehicle, and there was a foot pursuit. Officer Collado was there. He was off duty on his way to work. He assisted. Officer Wilhelms works deep night. So this is transitioning from the late night shift to the morning shift, the day shift, when this occurred. They were able to catch the guy. Uh, Officer Investigator Nielsen there on the end, the third one, he was able, after they arrested the guy, to interview him. And he obtained a confession and located a missing firearm that was taken from the vehicle. Good, great example of teamwork. The next is a quadrant two, uh, two beat, and the north end there also. On the bottom right hand corner, BMV again, if you look at that, 25 BMVs reported in this quarter. This would be for April, May, and June. This is, this is as of June 30th. So, and you look at the BMVs out of 25, 14 of them, the vehicles were unlocked. So it's still behavior that we've been working on and communicating with the public about lock, take, and hide, and we still have uh, over half of the cases there, uh, at least in this quarter, uh, where the vehicles were unlocked. Also on 2Beat, we had a, um, this BMV. It was captured by a video surveillance of the, the homeowner, and we had a PSP go out there, which is a PSP Barnes, Public Safety Professional Barnes. He was one of our civilians that was trained into in, in latent fingerprint uh, collection. So he uh, went out there, he collected the print, and we got the first latent print hit that resulted in an identification and arrest. So he identified a suspect from that, from that fingerprint, and they were walking around just jiggling door handles, and then they got in the vehicle. And, but he, he left fingerprint there, and then uh, Investigator Nielsen, he gets the BMVs for the northern half of the city. That's his area that he's assigned to. So he was able uh, to get, that, uh, get a warrant and get the guy picked up. And the guy was uh, interviewed, and he confessed to, to multiple BMVs in the area. So he, it's another example of teamwork using the technology and the uh, personnel and programs that we've, uh, you all have approved o over the last three years. The next is a, is a talk uh, discussion about one of the places, uh, a residence in the 2900 block of Nelson. Uh, on May 11th, we went out there on a disturbance call regarding a possible assault. Officers saw a bunch of narcotics paraphernalia in plain sight. It's pretty obvious that this house was kind of a kind of a flop house uh, for people uh, of nefarious character, so to speak. And so they went out there. They called narcotics. They uh, completed a search warrant there and arrested uh, two people for felony drug possession, somebody for lying about their name, another person for warrants. We turned that house over to code, and on the 13th, two days later, code was out there. We assisted them on an inspection warrant because it was a rental owner, but it was a rental property, and she was allowing these people kind of stay there. So the owner was contacted. She went out there. They issued criminal trespass warnings. You see all the stuff that was put outside. And on the 18th, uh, Sergeant Clay, one of our patrol sergeants who's responsible for that area, went back out there, and the house was, was being cleaned out. And the owner, she's either going to sell the residence or find some legitimate renters. So... Another example of cooperation between the police department, code compliance, building inspection was involved. This is part of our T25 program. We identify a place that's an epicenter for crime or nefarious activities. We, uh, we respond and partner with the other, um, other city departments. Uh, the 13-minute report, as we talked about this before, is, uh, is targeting areas and asking officers to go through a, a target area for 13 minutes in their shift. And we expect to see decreases. If you look at the bottom half of this slide here, so this is what we get with our intelligence that's, that's developed by our crime analysts. Looking at the crime for the last 28 days, we can uh, look at the day of week, time of day. So we give officers this target between, so on the four BMVs in the hot zone between 2200, between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. So asking them to spend their, their 13 minutes somewhere in there. Burglary of habitations on the day shift or afternoon between noon and 5 p.m or auto thefts between uh, 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. So giving the officers windows uh, to, to target their, their, their directed patrol, that's part of the goal of this. 
uh, 13 minute patrol tactics. Again, this is UPS and the 40, uh, 4,200 departments. You can see we had four offenses at U UPS between June 1st and June 16th. So we did the 13 minute deployment uh, between June 16th and July 8th, and we didn't see any offenses at UPS there at all. And then we only had one in the 4,200 department. So a significant impact for one, two weeks compared to the next two weeks. Hillcrest Apartments, this was another 13 minute deployment. Uh, target area. So you look at the ones on the on the left. That's uh, June 1st to June 16th, and June 16th to July 8th. Again, a significant reduction in the total number of reported offenses. Officer Rodriguez. He was dispatched uh, to a call on suspicious activity, Military Parkway in Peachtree. He noticed the business there. People coming and going. Caught his attention. He went inside and talked to the owner. Supposed to be a phone repair business, uh, phone accessory repair business. He noticed some some gaming uh, uh, video slot machines in various states of repair. He received consent to walk through. He found in the back area there were numerous people playing uh, games. There was a firearm he recovered, thirteen thousand dollars in cash, and and shut down basically an illegal an illegal gambling operation there. So, uh, uh, great uh, work, boss Rodriguez, going the extra mile, being a, uh, being paying attention to the details, and not just going there and answering a call and clearing. Uh, Officer Offit is one of our patrol officers. He works deep nights. He was uh, working the area around the uh, Grand Junction there, known for some uh, some offenses that occur there, B&Bs, drug deals. So as, as he rounds a corner, he sees a, an 18-wheeler there, and somebody's loading these bells. It was 150 pounds uh, of marijuana that was being unloaded. It was a drug deal going down right there. He was able to catch the person in the Jeep. The 18-wheeler uh, got away. We were able to get him identified and turned over to the DEA, Drug Enforcement Administration, so the feds, because he's an interstate truck driver, so he goes from one state to the next, and he's probably doing this other places. An interesting note here is that due to Texas House Bill 1325 uh, passing, which was the state law that legalized hemp in the state of Texas, it uh, in the language of that law, that it, uh, uh, you've probably seen some of the news agencies, Governor Abbott and the uh, Lieutenant Governor and the Attorney General, sent a letter out to the uh, to Texas State uh, District Attorneys across the state because they've uh, they've interpreted the law, and it, it is valid interpretation, I believe, as, as that is written, that the THC concentration in hemp can be 0.3%. THC is the psychoactive compound found in marijuana, tetrahydrocarbonyl. So um, we are now have the bare responsibility of determining if it's 0.3% or more, more than 0.3% THC. Currently, we, we don't have uh, the facilities or the labs that we use with the ability to test this. So this 150 pound seizure here, we brought the guy in, in the Jeep, we, hand, we fingerprinted him, photographed him, interviewed him, and we had to release him because the DA will not take a charge based on the state law, even though we saw him, found him in possession of 150 pounds of marijuana. Officer LeBaron here, um, he works in the area around, um, uh, normally he works around the retail area. He got a call over to, about a robbery at the P uh, uh, Metro PCS over on Military Parkway. He responded over there and he found um, uh, a, a vehicle, that, suspicious vehicle. He tried to stop it. They fled on foot. There was a car chase. They, they wrecked out, jumped out and ran. They were able to catch him. And they also, uh, they found they recovered the weapons used. They were the robbers from the Metro PCS. He was able to recover the weapons that they used, which is a hammer and a crowbar. And he found uh, cash. And, and the vehicle that he was behind was actually taken in a carjacking in DeSoto earlier that day. Hadn't been reported stolen on the computer. That's why he didn't know it was stolen. But a great job by a young officer there. Another uh, places location of the Pop residence. Pop is problem oriented policing. This is in the. Uh, Creek Crossing area, looking there, uh, 28 calls for service at that location since December the 1st of 2018. Uh, three young men lived there with their mother. Uh, all three of those young men were confirmed gang members of the Pac-Man group, a gang that's been identified here in the city. Um, between those three young men and young men who associate with them there at the house, there were a combined 20 arrests, including arrests for robbery. UCW is unlawfully carrying a weapon. UMV is auto theft. Discharge of firearm in certain municipalities, burglary of habitation, assault, and criminal trespass. So it was a place where people were gathering that weren't up to any good. 
So our deployment unit was assigned to the area and we deployed our camera trailers and we worked with code and building inspections and our T25 program and the resident and worked with the owner because it was a rental property and the residents were, were evicted and moved out on July 1st. So another success story working with other city departments. Officer Woodruff works in that area, the, the eight beat, which is a creek crossing area. He's responsible as the pop officer for developing relationships with the residents in the area. And he's very well known by the folks out there that he works with. He's also a, a task with knowing who the bad guys are, people who are known offenders. And he has a very extensive, uh, uh, what we call a hook book, his own personal reference that he puts together of, of the people who are out there committing crimes and who have criminal records and where they live, who they hang out with, things like that. So he was very instrumental in helping bring that, identifying that location on Shadow Creek and then bringing some resolution to it. This is what we also look at when we look at people. We identify folks, and this is just an example of some of the people that live in seven, eight, or nine beats. So that's the southern half of the city from about um, uh, the um, Cartwright on, on down south. That these are, these are some of the folks, the criminal histories of folks living out there. So we know who these folks are, and they're not been, haven't been charged with anything right now, so we're not listing their names. But a 17-year-old that lives out there with a one, one robber, a discharge of firearms in certain municipalities, which is just shooting a gun in the city limits. Uh, tampering with government re uh, record, physical evidence there, went there from person. You look at some of the other folks here, a 20-year-old. So these are folks that are not in custody right now. They've been arrested or charged recently. This, this young man if on the, in the middle on the left-hand side, in June of this year, he was uh, charged with resistant arrest and theft from person. Uh, theft of property there, the bottom 18-year-old. 18 18 year we have a warrant for him for a, a shooting that occurred in, in March of 2018. And we, he's absconded. We, we believe he's in Nebraska now, but he was living out there. And he has associates there, so he may be coming and going back and forth. We're trying to track him down. 18-year-old in custody there for robbery back in March of this year. Um, he's been arrested as another 17-year-old. So this is just an example of, of what we do when we talk about people, places, and behaviors. We try to identify known offenders or people that have either been involved in criminal activity or may be involved currently. And we, uh, we track them and try to catch them doing something doing something bad. We had a, a sex offender uh, compliance check this year, uh, earlier th this quarter actually. The Texas Department of Public Safety, the state, state police came out, they notified us they'd like to partner with us. And we have 164 registered sex offenders in the city. They came out with our uh, sex offender officer and some other investigators that were signed on May 13th and 14th. And so five uh, Mesquite police officers, 16 DPS agents, and they went out to all 164 residences. They found three folks weren't there where they were supposed to be, so they filed cases on them. And so just good to know that all of our information is, uh, is accurate. They also uh, arrested some folks with warrants out there and identified some others as absconded and not at the residence where they're supposed to be. So it was a great uh, partnership between the state police and Mesquite PD. Vehicle deaths, this was from uh, this is year to date up to June 30th. Of course, for, uh, we put this together and submitted it to you. Friday, we had another motor vehicle fatality. It was a young man who, uh, who was in a motorcycle accident. So it was the only motorcycle accident fatality this year since January 1st, and that was Friday. So it's not included in these numbers here, but it is, uh, so there's six fatalities for the year right now, but this is up to the, the second, end of the second quarter. Our deployment unit, when I first arrived here in 2016, the philosophy was we had a, an impact unit, it was called. There were four full-time officers assigned to a unit. They worked mostly the day shift, and, and they, they worked in patrol. Uh, I believe a, a better use of those resources was to put those people back in patrol at the time, especially to assist with the call answering, and then identify uh, some officers who are willing to flex their schedules, come in early, stay late, work around their shifts, and deploy them based on, on a, uh, or using overtime. And we would create, based on our intelligence data that we developed, targets of people, places, people or places, and we would give four-hour windows where they would go work those areas. And so this is some of the things they were able to accomplish from April to June. Uh, the 22 felony arrests, 35 misdemeanor arrests, 179 citations, 200 traffic stops. And uh, they, cre they did recover some, some narcotics and, and one firearm. Um, they worked, those on the left there, the primary focus areas during the second quarter were the Royal Vista Apartments, the T25 motels, 
Grand Junction and Commerce Way, those motels over there, eight beat, which is the creek crossing area due to some robberies that occurred there in May. And then all of our POP, our pop houses uh, in the city, that's where they targeted those places. This is something I just wanted to interesting slide as we look at residential burglaries trending from 2015 to 2019. Uh, we've been able to uh, sustain a decrease over the last uh, three years, 17, 18, and 19, I believe. Part of that uh, success of that um, reduction in crime is because three things that we've put into place, I believe a part-time deployment where we could target the exact date and time, day of week and time of day where crime was occurring. But also in April 2017, you, you all approved as a body the addition of the PSP position, the public service professional, in the budget, which allowed me to free up officers who were from taking some of those lower uh, level calls, lower priority calls, and put them back into patrol. And I believe that's paid dividends. Also, you approved as a council in the budget two crime analysts, and uh, we they're developing the intelligence. They came on board in July of 17. So I believe we're starting to see the results of those those uh, investments. In the, in the police department by the city council and the city management. Uh, so I, I appreciate that. I wanted to share that with you. Robberies, robberies have been, uh, uh, are always a high priority for us. We've had a couple of ones that made the rounds on, on Facebook, got a lot of public attention. And so I wanted to let you see where we're at, trending from the first quarter this year to the second quarter this year, and then where we are compared to last year. Uh, robbers are something that, that are very, uh, very important. Uh, we we aggressively de de develop intelligence and target folks who are going out there robbing people. We still have about 15% of our robberies every every year are committed by folks that are just shoplifters and they're using force to try to escape, and that's considered a robbery when you use physical force to commit a theft. Uh, but but the, we concentrate. Uh, on developing the intelligence in the places and get out there ahead of time. We want to prevent robberies. I want to pre prevent all crime, actually, but uh, our goal is to keep it from ever happening. But when it does happen, we want to respond quickly, and I believe we've done a very good job of doing that this year. On narcotics unit, kind of a comparison for second quarter. Um, comparison of 2018, from 2018 to 2019, they're doing a great job. 51 arrests compared to 21 arrests in 2018. Uh, seizures, uh, vehicle seized nine compared to one, and firearms seized, 63 firearms. Um, they've done a tremendous job. Uh, they've worked a lot of hours. They come in early, they stay late any time, like in the earlier house I mentioned um, in the, early in the presentation, whenever officers see something and they call in, uh, then the, the narcotics will respond and do a warrant. They also have had a, a number of successes based on citizen tips into narcotics that we followed up on. And of course, the currency that's been seized from 2018, uh, second quarter to this year. We've had an emphasis on hiring, of course, trying to close the gap. We have police officers, hired six police officers out of the 172 applications processed. Uh, we had one dispatcher out of 394 contacts made and one detention officer hired in 2019. Dispatch hiring initiative, we've been working with HR department as you can see, the contacts made 394. Um, when you look at how many people were initially uh, uh, expressed an interest in, 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 the, uh, in the process, and then they actually cut it down to 172 who responded, 92 who tested, you see how it windows down into where they passed the typing test and passed critical, we ended up with 10 packets. And out of that 10, only three people passed the polygraph, and right now one one, is only, one of those has passed the board. So we're still sifting through that to try to get folks in. Even though we're having uh, difficulty w uh, with, with dispatch, we, uh, manpower-wise, we have seven vacancies. I want to make you and the public to know that the, the dispatchers we have on the ground are doing a great job. The metric that we use uh, to measure is, is a national standard by NINA, the National Emergency Number Association, that a percentage of your calls answer within 10 seconds, and we still have 99.61% uh, of our calls answered within 10 seconds. So they're doing a tremendous job down there. No calls are going unanswered or unresponded to based on the staffing shortages. They're, they're covering it with overtime, and they're doing a tremendous job. Our BPOC, our Basic Police Officer Course, our academy, uh, we started one class in, in, in November of, of 18, and they've graduated. Uh, we also just started a class in June of, of this, this, uh, this year, June 4th. We have seven recruits in there. Five are police recruits, two are uh, 
skeet fire personnel who are going through to be arson investigators. So they're going to go through our academy. Typically, this is the first time we've done this. Typically, they will go outside to some other academy and get trained, usually the regional academy, and then they come here and they still have to go through our, our learn our computer system and, and our case filing system. This way, they're going to be taught with our recruits the whole step of the way. So when they finish, I think it's a more, it's a more efficient way. Out of those five recruits for the PD, one is already uh, asked to, to, to re he's already resigned, stepped down to a, to a detention officer position. He's feeling one of our vacancies in the jail, but he decided that the police officer position was not, not for him. I want to highlight citizen involvement. We had one, one citizen at the Prescott Police Department. She, in, in, in seven days, in two weeks, or seven days there, she called in two different uh, burglary motor vehicles in progress. On May 1st, she called in, and officers arrived on scene, located the suspects, and the foot pursuit ensued. A canine came out to help, and all three suspects were arrested. The vehicle that they arrived at the apartment complex in was taken in a robbery in Garland earlier that day. This was on the late night shift, overnight shift. And so on May 8th, she called in again, located the suspects. Another foot pursuit occurred, and all three suspects were taken into custody. And the end result of this is because a citizen was paying attention and because she was willing to get involved by just picking up the phone and calling us, giving detailed descriptions, staying on the phone with our call taker, six B&V suspects were taken into custody over those seven days. And her place where she lives and where she parks her car is a much safer place. We've nom she's been nominated for a citizen certificate of merit, so I'm sure you'll be seeing her uh, in the future here receiving that. Another citizen involvement, I want to talk about the mechanisms and systems we have in place to share information with the public. There's the Mesquite uh, Community Crime Map here that you they can see, you can log into. There's a link on the city's uh, uh, website, and then it's right there. Uh, it's www.communitycrimemap.com. Uh, we also have an active call log, and I say active call log. This is this is our 24-hour call log. It doesn't populate the uh, the calls until after the officer clears the call, and it's available through the city's website as well. We we also publish a jail log every day, and so people can look in there and see who's been arrested and that's all public information see what the charge is and who, how many people we have in our jail we also have a partnership through a uh, ring through the neighbors portal and then um, with our nextdoor.com we put out information and people can share information with us our crime prevention uh, started in april these some some of the events they attended uh, Councilman Brown Lamont and I and Officer Rowan were at the uh, Jerry Junkins Head Start their week of the young child, reading to the kids. In May, there were a couple of events. These are one of our explorers who graduated high school and one who uh, was one of our mentorship program. And the top photos, when they took him out to eat as a graduation dinner uh, to the Cheesecake Factory, I believe that was. And the officers did that, the, the Explorer Advisors. And then one young lady, they attended her graduation down there at the bottom. That's Jenny Luna. She graduated from West Mesquite High School. Also in June, we had several events. The Heroes, the Heroes Run, the car wash at the Church of Christ. They hold that event every year and watch the police officers' cars that come by there. And then Officer uh, Contreras and I went to the Fathers and First Responders Breakfast there on the top, uh, top left. I have to take any questions that you have. A lot, of, a lot of information in a very short time. Yes, sir. You've been very busy. Your department's done a great job, and we appreciate you and all of your uh, your men and women under your command. Uh, they do their best to keep us safe every day. So, Mr. Wurls, you have something? Or yes, sir. Tim? Chief, uh, thank you for the update. I, you didn't uh, talk about uh, any of our speeders and stuff. I know that's a big concern with a lot of citizens of people driving too fast on our roads, but I can tell you that uh, on Gross Road, in Kearney, New Market, Rodeo Center Drive, I've seen a big increase of police officers out there. Uh, in fact, one of the guys that works at my, my business was uh, guilty of speeding and was given a <laughs> ticket, but, uh, and he paid it and he deserved it. Uh, so, uh, but I appreciate your officers out there uh, stepping up the patrol to try to slow these guys, these people down. So, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Any other questions for the chief? All right. Thank you very much.